morning. Good morning. Uh, let's see. We, we start as we always start. God is good. All, all the time. time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Uh, we want to uh, welcome uh, Michael Harvey uh, today uh, for our as our guest minister. Uh, uh, bringing bringing our message today, so we thank him for being here. We thank uh, we certainly send our prayers for uh, Jamie and her vacation and her time off and giving her the rest uh, that we so wish she would get, so that she's uh, feeling refreshed. Obviously, this was this was an interesting week uh, for her, but I can tell you that she did take some time for herself, and I I'm so glad that she did. Um, most of what, what I'll have is will be in uh, joys and concerns for, in, in terms of announcements. Thank you for coming uh, to worship today. Um, and there's a trustees meeting following uh, uh, service today. There is a deacons meeting scheduled for uh, next Sunday. And I believe that's all I have. So, uh, and so if uh michael you can lead us in our, our call to worship we are going to say it all together but he could tell you that shall we read together this prayer yes may the anointed of god dwell in your hearts through faithfulness May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. May you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love really is. May, your, may you experience the love of the anointed. Though it is so great, you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Amen. Help us to 
experience your presence and learn to love as you love. In Jesus' name, amen. for me to be their God and for them to be my people. There will be no further need for neighbor to te try to teach neighbor or kin to say to kin, learn to know God who is present. They will all know me, the least no less than the greatest, for I will forgive their guilt and remember their sin no more. Amen. Amen. There are many names for God in the scripture. Most of them are metaphors. So it is, doesn't really define God. Nothing can really define God. God is beyond definition. God is beyond our understanding, our comprehension. But the names of God tell us something about God, something about other people's experience of God. Uh, one of the names that is used in the Bible is uh, Elohim. It's a, a Hebrew word that is plural, plural for El. El should be translated as God, and Elohim should be translated as God's, plural. It's interesting that the first chapter in the Bible, the creation chapter, uh, the name of God is Elohim, plural, and really should be translated in the beginning God's, created the heavens and the earth. The reason they translate it as singular, God, is because they use singular verbs with this plural word. The idea here is that God is plural. God, uh, as we find out later in the chapter, includes both male and female. Let us create, let us make human kind in our image, male and female. Uh, so we find that God includes both, not only the male, but God includes the female as well. Uh, so that's one reason that God's name is plural there. Uh, 
though though the idea with the singular verbs is that even though god is plural god includes both male and female and god includes so much that we don't even know about yet god is one it's not like the gods of rome and greece and the ancient mesopotamian world uh, where they had many gods and they were often warring with each other but the living god the true god who created the heavens and the earth is one it's not the number one it's the harmony the the oneness that we find in god uh, abraham knew god as el shaddai is the hebrew word and that means the God who nurtures us. The God who nurtures us. What a beautiful uh, name for God. But later, we find the, the name of God that's used throughout the Old Testament, the name of God that is definitive in some way, in some limited way, uh, is Yahweh. Uh, you remember that the name Yahweh, which is used for, throughout the Old Testament, the, the name Yahweh was given to Moses at the burning bush. Uh, what happened was the idea there is Moses is being called to tell the pe tell old Pharaoh to let my people go, as the song says. Uh, Moses is being called to, to tell the people who are enslaved in Egypt to be, to, to, to be free, to get out of Egypt to live lives of freedom. And so uh, God, Moses says to the burning bush, to God speaking out of the burning bush, uh, who shall I tell them sent me? Because there were many gods in the world at that day, many names for different gods. People worshiped many different gods. So Moses is saying, Who's, who are you? What's your name? Who shall I say sent me? And the voice out of the burning bush says, tell them, uh, essentially he repeats it twice, Yahweh, Yahweh. It's the, uh, the, the way that people usually translate that into English is, uh, um, is uh, I am. That comes from the Greek because the Greeks when they translated the Hebrew into Greek, mistranslated the name of God. It, it is not I am. I am is the idea of essence. It's a Greek idea of a, a God who is, who exists, who, who is eternal. All of that may be true of God, but that's not the name of God. The name of God in Hebrew should be translated into English as I will be there. Amen. I will be there. That's so wonderful. And so God is saying to Moses, uh, tell the people to get up and, and leave slavery. Be free. And my name is the, the very essence of who I am to them is presence. I will be there. If they get up and they claim freedom i will be there to help them i will be there to comfort them to strengthen them i will be there that's the name of god what a wonderful name uh, but the idea of presence is an idea that is throughout is the strongest idea about god throughout the bible both the old testament and the new testament i will be there now, you don't see Yahweh or I will be there in the, in the Old Testament much, if at all, in most translations. What you see is the word Lord. And sometimes, if you, as most of the translations have Lord all capital letters. Now, when you see that in the Old Testament, that's the name of God. So instead of reading the word Lord, you should think, what it's really saying is, I will be there. Or presence is the name of God. So for instance, the Lord is my shepherd really was, is 
I, I will be there is my shepherd. The God who will be there is my shepherd. The God who is present is my shepherd. That's the idea behind it. So when you come across that in the Old Testament, think of that truth. Think of the, the true name of God. I will be present. I will be there to help you, to guide you, to comfort you. I was thinking about um, that wonderful lady, China, who was a minister here in the church. And she passed away, uh, evidently, of an overdose. Um, and, and I'm thinking of her. She was such a wonderful person. I did know her and meet her. And, uh, she was, and she did such a good job, such a fine person. But this happened, and this wasn't an, an affliction or an illness or a, a difficulty she was dealing with for many years. Uh, and she, she, it, she succumbed to it. Uh, it happened. Things happen to all of us. We all have our failings. We all have our weaknesses. And we don't always do everything right. And sometimes we act in uh, dangerous and weak ways. But I know this, by the name of God, God was with her. Not only with her when she was doing her work here at the church and in the community. Not only with her in the high times and the joyful times, but God was with her in her struggles with addiction. God was with her when she died. I remember a, a story I read about Steven Spielberg uh, researching his movie, uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan, I believe was the name of it. And he, his researchers found that the young men, almost all of them young, some of them 17, maybe even some of them had lied they may have been 16 uh, when they were coming on to normandy my uncle david was among those young men who came on to the beach at normandy uh, from uh, american soldiers and the germans the german assassins were up in the cliffs above the beach and they were just shooting these young men down as if they were some kind of animal or something killing them, uh, wounding many of them. And the researchers found that, that, that the sand on the beach and the ocean around the beach was blood red because of these young men who were dying on that beach in Normandy. And he also found, uh, interviewing people who survived, and fortunately my uncle David survived that, that uh, invasion, that uh, Normandy. Uh, he lived to be in his 90s and the French government came over when he was in his 90s uh, and gave him an award for uh, surviving that battle uh, that in, uh, coming onto the beach in Normandy. He died six months later but th that was it's amazing uh, to me. But uh, the researchers found that these young men who were wounded and dying on the beach, we're not calling out for God. Almost to a man, they were calling out for their mothers. Isn't that a moving thing? That these young men, 17, 18, calling for their mothers as they lay dying. Now, their mothers couldn't come to them. They would have if they could, I'm sure. But they couldn't. But you know what I believe? Because of God's name, that God came to them. That God was there with them. Every one of them. That God was their mother. And God held them and comforted them and saw them through the passage to death. And God is with them now. Because that's the name of God. That's who God is. 
and the same is true of China. And the same is true of you and me. God will be with us when we are sick, when we are in trouble, when we are dying. God will be there. Amen. That's the name of God. Now, a wonderful thing about the name of God is that Jesus carries the name. It is my trust, my belief, based on evidence, but nothing I could really prove to anybody. It is my trust that Jesus is God with us. That's what the Bible testifies to. Jesus carries the name of God. The name Jesus is a Greek name. Uh, his mother and father and brothers and sisters and disciples did not call him Jesus. They called him Yeshua, which is the Hebrew uh, uh, that's translated into Greek as Jesus. And Yeshua means I, Yahweh, I will be there helps. Isn't that wonderful? And you could say it could also be translated as a prayer. Yahweh, I will be there. Help. <laughs> Help me. Help us. Jesus. The name of God. And God helps. So it's uh, in Jesus we Jesus came into the world and people couldn't tell that this was God as a human. You couldn't tell by looking at Jesus. I just noticed that picture in your hallway next to the little, uh, to the bathroom and the little lounge. Uh, what's it called? The Hayes room or Hawes room? Yeah. That, do you have a picture there of a man? And uh, that's more like Jesus looked. I mean, we don't know what Jesus looked like, but that's pretty close because that seems to be more of a picture of a, a Middle Eastern Jew. That's what Jesus was. And God came in that human form. Um, but uh, so Jesus, when we look at Jesus and we read the words of Jesus in the Gospels, and when we read about Jesus, what he did, how he died for us, for the world, uh, in love, and his resurrection. In Jesus, we see God. God is beyond our understanding, but in Jesus, we see what God is like, the humility of God, the love of God, the power of God, which is a power for love. We see that in Jesus, what God is like. But we also see what we are called to be like because Jesus was human too. We are called to be like Jesus in this world. Uh, so Jesus is with us. Remember that Jesus said in several places, uh, at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, at the end of the Great Commission, I will be with you Amen. till this is finished. Uh, he said in the Gospel of John, I will never leave you or forsake you. Now, we can't tell that, can we, uh, by our senses. I, I don't see Jesus anywhere. I haven't seen him. Uh, I may have had a dream about Jesus, but I've never really seen Jesus. I've never touched Jesus. I've never touched God. I've never, I've never heard Jesus speak. I've read the words that are in the Gospels, but I've never heard Jesus out loud. And I've never smelled Jesus or tasted Jesus. But I trust. This is what faith is. I trust because of of what I have experienced of God and Jesus. 
from what I've read about God and Jesus and what has been told me about God and Jesus, that Jesus is with me, that Jesus will help me. Whatever I go through and however I fail, Jesus will not fail me. Jesus will not forsake me, nor you. Whatever happens in life, uh, that's why I printed this passage from Jeremiah. What a wonderful passage. In fact, you know why the New Testament is called the New Testament? Because of this passage. Mm -hmm. This is the new, the new Testament and the New Covenant are synonyms. It's the same idea, just different words to describe it. New Testament, New Covenant. And so we have... The whole New Testament is supposed to be a, a teaching about this passage of Scripture, this little passage of Scripture. And what a marvelous passage it is because it's saying the same thing about God's name that I'm saying to you today. It's saying the God who created the universe that's beyond our, the universe is beyond our knowledge and description. We know things about it, but we... We don't know the depth of it. We don't know all about it for sure. We just have some little ideas of it. The same with the God who creates the universe. Beyond our understanding. Beyond our knowledge. And yet, according to Jeremiah, according to Jesus, according to this, the scriptures, we can actually know this living God, this God who loves us. We can know this God. It may be an indirect knowledge through the love of other people. That's according to Jesus' word and Jeremiah's. But it's a true knowledge because we have failed in our love for other people. But God forgives us. They shall know me because I will forgive their sins, their destructive behavior, their lack of love for other people. That's how you know God. I'll tell you this. I've come to understand in Scripture from both Jeremiah and other places in the Old Testament and Jesus and the New Testament that you cannot know God directly. I remember when, uh, I remember reading uh, that um, Gandhi said one time, my desire is to see the face of God. Now Gandhi was a, a good person in many ways. I had failings as all of us do, but he was very good, he loved people. I would say to Gandhi, and I say to you today, and to myself, you can't see the face of God, but you can see the face of your neighbor. And you can love your neighbor as yourself. You can do that, it's possible. It is possible for you to do that because the presence of God is with you. The presence of Jesus is with you to help you to do that. And that's the idea uh, here in this passage. And when you fail to do that, God will help you to get on your feet again and start again. And because we believe in the resurrection, because Jesus rose from the dead and ever lives. So getting on your feet again is even after death as well as before death. God bless you and help, help us all to understand and believe with all our hearts that this God who created all things and made us in God's own image and likeness, 
this God is present to help us. Amen. Amen. This is one of my favorite hymns, so I'm glad you're going to do it for me. <laughs> Concerns. I realize, uh, Michael, one thing that I didn't uh, as we went through the, the program, there's a time for a prayer to sort of encompass everything that's lifted up. So if you're com are you comfortable doing, doing that? Absolutely. Okay. So, so there's much. Um, I couldn't help but uh, be touched by uh, the faces of God, and, and I, I hope you can each and uh, every one of you appreciate uh, the insert today and the picture that we found of Chana, the, the smile, the, the joy, it, uh, any of you that have experienced Chana, this is just a spectacular uh, shot of her and we, we miss her dearly. I know that there's been questions about uh, a service for her. There are no plans yet. It's not been put together, it's not halfway together and we're just about, the family is grieving. They need time. They are gathering as a family, they are grieving as a family. Uh, they'll be working with Jamie. We have no small task to uh, put that service together to figure out how to do it. She touched lives throughout this community. And so as it comes together and as it is, uh, dec the decisions are made, rest assured, we will absolutely communicate that in each of the ways that we do with emails and phone calls, whatever it takes to make sure that people are informed uh, and can uh, uh, know that that when that service is and how it's going to be done. Um, let's see. Just want to see. All right. So we have, uh, as often can happen in life, there there is uh, more sad news to share. We have been praying for uh, baby Gabby, Gabriella, um, and uh, this past week uh, she did pass. Mm -hmm. The medical conditions that she had uh, were. Uh, were numerous and so uh, it was just too much and so she uh, she passed uh, early last week we pray for uh, her father Justin her mother Sandy her sister Amelia and Anne and 
her husband Steve and the entire family that uh, surrounds Gabby. Uh, it is it is brutal to lose a child. Uh, so we, we just offer up everything that we can to love them, to support them, to help them get through uh, such a difficult time and to gather as, uh, as they gather as a family. And gathering as a family, I'm gonna steal it there, Lou. Uh, uh, today is Lou's 83rd birthday. Yes. Today is Lou's 83rd birthday. So we have that celebration. And, and uh, 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 well, Lou is here, because uh, I know he loves church. He loves this church. Uh, Lucy is with, with Lou's, uh, some family coming together to, to celebrate that birthday, but they're also gathering because we know that Lou's is, is on a journey. And so we don't know the time, God knows the time, but all of that, all of that's happening, but uh, she has reached that milestone of 83 years, and that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, I had a smile on my face when I left. There we go. <laughs> what you just said is there's, uh, Luz had a smile on her face when you left, so that's awesome. Yes, Melissa. So we've also been praying for Liz, and she did pass away yesterday. And so we, uh, so we uh, pray for Melissa and all that, uh, all those that uh, surround Liz. I don't know why this happens. I don't know why we, these clusters happen, but uh, absolutely prayers, uh, prayers for you. And, and so. I forgot to mention the flowers. So what do you want? What do you want to say? Today. Daughter Caitlin turns 33, and am I in public? Yes. So the flowers on the table that uh, um, I did, it, Tanya didn't know what, what recognition, but anyway, Sherry is the one who took the time to uh, have flowers on the table honoring Chana. Uh, Tanya is the one that, that uh, had this picture, and so it, it all came together as we often do with this church family. They are absolutely beautiful. Riddell lifts up uh, there. All those that are, uh, pray, lift up prayers for all those in active addiction. It is a beast. It is a beast that has to be battled. Um, and there are all forms of addiction. Some are drugs, some are food, some are sexual, some are, they're all there. They're all there to, to, be, uh, to be fought against and to, to summon the strength uh, to, to get through them. And it, it is a daily, uh, a daily journey. Yes, Musu. We had mass shootings this week that just, they're, they're, they're daily occurrences. It's just, it, 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 I, one does lose, uh, lose words, but, but what Musu's lifting up is that God was there. God was in, the, in those moments, those that, those that perished, that God, uh, God was there, and we, we just, yeah, I, 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 I have no words. I, I really don't. So, but God was. So. Yes, Tom. Fantastic. Uh, friend Elaine finishing chemo. They go to look for the cancer and they can't find it. Amen. That's chemo. That's that's a that's a blessing. Praise God. Praise God. Th and thank you for the prayers that we've been lifting up uh, in these past weeks. So, yes, Sue Holland. We certainly pray for Sue. Sue is a member of our church that, that uh, is unable to come, and uh, Linda is a faithful, faithful friend. So we uh, pray pray for Sue Holland. And, uh, the, uh, and her family as well. We thank you, God, because we know through Jesus that you love us, all of us. And we pray for these who have been mentioned today we know you love them. We pray for those who have died, this little baby. And we trust your promise to be there with her and to be there with those who are grieving, especially her mother and father, family, and the people at the church. We pray for 
your presence. We thank you for your presence with China and trust her into your arms, into your care, into your love. And we pray that you will be with the people of the church in their grief, in her, as well as her family and her many friends. Comfort them in their grief and help them to trust in your love, in your presence. All the others who are sick, who are facing debility and even death, we ask for your blessing, your help, your presence with them and with those who help them and aid them and care about them. We see so much that is violent, and hateful, and mean in this world. We see so many, usually young men, but sometimes older men, sometimes even women, who are acting destructively toward their neighbors. We trust them to your judgment. And we pray that you will comfort those who have been wounded and killed in such, so much violence, not only here in America, but all over the world. So many wars, so much killing. Please be with us to help us to love one another and to change this world to a place of a promised land, a place of your presence, a place of your love. We are small and in many ways insignificant, but in your eyes and with your help, your presence, great things can happen through us. So help us. Help this church to show the community around that you can love your neighbor as yourself, that it's possible. May this church be that kind of light in Fall River. And we pray your help in the name of Jesus, who loved us, gave himself for us, and whom you raised from the dead to ever be present with us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. The offering box is at the back at the back. Uh, I don't know if that's the back or the front. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, as you go out, the offering box is <laughs> You know, I get mixed up with all these names, Narthex and Anthrax. And, um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know it's there. And I do offer a prayer of thanksgiving that God provides for this church. Through all the difficulties of life, uh, God is here and helps this church. So thank you. And thank you for your participation in God's love and help for this church. Shall we pray together? Uh, do you do that out together? Pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And the song she's doing now is my absolute favorite. <laughs>
You have, how many kids do you have? <laughs> <laughs> such a beautiful job with that. Thank you. There's an old version that says, since love rules both heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Wonderful song. Uh, let's receive a blessing. God, bless us and keep us. May your face shine upon us. Be gracious to us and give us your peace. The peace that passes all understanding, which will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.